Do you know what the opposite of playing is? It is not seriousness. It is not boredom. The opposite of playing is depression. Only 9% of people that have a job go to work to have fun. 9%. That's about just the front row of this audience. <laughs> but before I continue, let me take you back to 1984. I'm 10 years old. I'm playing computer games with my cousin behind my father's computer. And together, we're conquering worlds, we're commanding armies, and we're solving mysteries. You can call it a, a small miracle that eventually I actually graduate from my primary and secondary school after a few extra exams. Um, and a, a shimmer of relief goes through my parents' house as I finally take my school bag, walk into the garden, and hang it on the flagpole to celebrate my success. So I'm thinking, next level, college. So I go studying, and I have three friends, and they live in this frat house. And the first thing we do is we create a local area network. There wasn't a lot of internet in those days. So we hooked up three computers to, uh, to be able to work together on some projects. And uh, again, we uh, commanded, we conquered, we played tournaments. It was unreal. I spent, you got him? <laughs> I spent so many days and hours of playing games, um, but I persist and finally, eventually, again, I graduate writing a paper about the strategic repositioning of a gaming company in Holland. After graduation, it made me wonder, what's the power of play and why are games so engaging? But before I go on, I have to warn you, if I explain the magic of game design, it kills the magic. So you have now time to leave or put your fingers in your ears for the next eight minutes, um, and otherwise I'm going to spoil your fun. So every computer game starts with, a, with setting a goal. For instance, um, to save the princess, or to slay the dragon, or to use uh, colored pieces of candy and combine them as fast as possible to get to the next, le next level. I see some recognition. And there's actions, there's obstacles in your way, of course, that uh, you know, make it harder to achieve the goal. And there's actions you, could, you have to undertake as a player that either have a positive or negative effect, and you learn which effect it has by the feedback you get. There's loads of feedback. And eventually, of course, you get points, coins, or bonuses if you achieve the set goal. And in this way, computer games are fantastic, engaging experiences. I don't know if you recently saw people running around in the streets with their mobile phone, trying to catch virtual creatures with throwing balls at them, virtual balls, of course, uh, in, the, in your neighbor's garden or at the park or wherever. Um, you didn't play that game, of course, neither did I. But 1.8 million people in Holland did. That's 10% of the whole population. That's one in every 10 people sitting right here. So there's at least two every row. And 100 million people played that game worldwide. And I heard yesterday on the news that this game was the number three topic on Twitter in 2016, which I found remarkable. So that's just a computer game. And all the feedback in computer games give you a fantastic experience. Like I had recently when I played a game with nine of my friends. And all the feedback was auditive, it was visual, and I was listening to my friends well, because we're, we were chatting on Skype and we were walking through this forest and we were searching for a dragon because we had to slay this dragon. And all of a sudden we heard, in the far, we heard a dragon coming flying at us, and we saw it flying over our heads, and my friends started using their bows to make it land, and it threw a fireball at us, and I had to, my, to use my shield to block it, and I saved my friends who were standing behind me, and eventually the dragon landed, and I tried to slay it with my, with my sword, and eventually we did. 
And after 30 minutes of epic battle, we slayed the dragon. And I got this epic sword that I could use to slay the next even bigger dragon. And that's how game design works on one end. But there's another end. And we call it the game loop. And it's a, a set of routine actions that you need to undertake as a player to progress throughout the game. And I'll give you another example that I hopefully and expect you will understand. You have a bunch of seeds. You put them in the ground. Then you have to wait. A little flower comes out. And you can slash the flower for money. Now you have more money. You can buy new seeds. You put them in the ground. You have to wait. The flower comes out. And you have to harvest the, the flower and get some money. And again, you have the seeds. Put them in the ground. I can do this for hours, but we only have five minutes left. <laughs> hey, but you played it for months and years or even longer. So this is what we call the game loop. And the game loop gets you in a, in a state of flow. And this state of flow makes games so engaging and addictive. Even so, that endorphine gives you a physical feeling of happiness while you are playing the game. And routine is great, of course, to become better in a game. But routine, it kills creativity. Creativity, the only competence we need to solve problems. Finding food, seducing your partner, excelling at work. You die without creativity. So I hope you understand a little bit more about game design so far. And if you combine, if you want to become a better person, you can combine the routine actions. But if you want to level up, you have to use creativity. How often do you take a different route to your work? How often do you drive a different road to your work? I recently bought a new navigation device, which is very intelligent, and I can hook my phone on, onto it, and then it knows where I want to go, because I'm really uh, careful with putting all the addresses where I have meetings. And as soon as traffic blocks my way on the highway, it redirects me to a different route, and I always take the different route. I never know where it's bringing me, but I know eventually it will take me to the destination that I need to go. And the advantage of this is that I don't have traffic. I keep in my flow, so I don't have any frustration or anger in me. I see beautiful sunshines, I see sheep, I see uh, meadows, I see rivers. And I'm really uh, uh, relaxed when I arrive at my work. So I urge you to every once in a while maybe try to take a different route to your work and change your routine. Because changing your routine can actually bring you great bonuses, like the points and coins in a game, but in real life, maybe the sunshine or a beautiful scenery. And maybe from tomorrow on, if you drive to work, you will take that different route. Or at least when you get into the office, walk up to a colleague and challenge him, uh, create some obstacles, uh, give some feedback on the actions that the person is uh, performing at work and compliment him on his or her performance. And maybe when you, get, when you get up and out of bed, you give yourself 10 points when you look into the mirror. Hey, I'm, I got up today and I'm looking sharp. Tap on the back and you take the stairs if you walk into your office instead of the elevator. Hey, level up, great, well done. If your colleague finally shows up in time for this one meeting where he's always late, giving him a badge, write it on a post-it saying, hey, punctual Peter, this one is for you. Well done. So, Let's try to add a little bit more of fun to our work, which is so important for game design. And then hopefully, not just this 9%, this front row here in front of me is the happy people, but eventually we can all level up. <laughs>